Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time I'm going to be doing a solitaire playthrough of Red November. This is the newest edition. Uh, I think it was the first edition. I believe this is the second. And basically what this game is all about uh, is a submarine that is in dire straits with all kinds of problems, fires and floods. And as you can see on the board, a giant kraken can show up and try to eat your submarine. You are a crew of gnomes, and I believe the game works from, you need basically three to, I think it's eight, possibly more. I think it's eight is the total number, maximum. Uh, it has an interesting turn mechanic in this game. Uh, you basically have something here, uh, you have a color for each, so I'm playing with red, blue, and green. So you have a little token here for each one of the gnomes. But there's a white one here, it's called a ghost, uh, it's the ghost token, and it will basically be used as, an, as a minute counter for your turn. So, not going to get into all the details of the rules, uh, but I will just very quickly say for setup, um, you have three different things that are going to go wrong with your ship. You have an oxygen counter, you have a heat counter for your a reactor overheating, and you have an engine sort of hull uh, counter as well for if you get crushed from the pressure. So all kinds of things are going to go wrong in this game. And the idea is you're going to try to survive all the way around the board. Basically there are 60, uh, yeah, 60 spaces. You have to get through them. Each of your gnomes has to survive here to the end of this green space to be rescued. If you don't, you lose the game. Uh, you lose the game if any one of these markers gets to the end here. That means you had a catastrophic failure. Uh, and you win if all of the no markers can get to this green space here by going all the way around the board. Now there's a couple things on the board here. There are little stars and there are little uh, white stars with a black uh, gear symbol around them. What the little gold stars mean is you must draw a uh, event card from the deck, which means bad things are going to happen. And the little ones, the white stars, mean you draw an item card. Item cards are things like fire extinguishers, grog, uh, and uh, manuals and things to help you fix your submarine that is in trouble. And so they have these little cards for each gnome. Uh, this is him in his sober state. If he starts drinking grog, you're going to flip him over and he's going to get, I guess, sort of tipsy. And they get kind of drunk, and then they get completely hosed, and then he passes out. Um, and again, we'll go through the mechanics of the, how that happens when we play the actual turns. So getting back into setup, uh, you roll a 10-sided die, which comes with the game. And you randomly assign each room has number 1 through 10. Um, and then I just randomly roll the dice off screen here, and that's where our starting three gnomes, when you play a solo game, you play three start out in the captain's quarters which is number 10 you're going to have six bottles of grog that can be picked up by the crew and you take the kraken card out of the uh, deck because the kraken doesn't show up first uh, and then you have this huge deck that you have to go through of horrible events uh, i will uh, go and take a look here at the tokens in a second uh, and so that's sort of basically the setup. I will show you the tokens. I will show you the action summaries you can take on your turn. Uh, oh, and these are item cards. We're also going to draw a couple items for each gnome. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do that. And then I think we're just going to get right into playing the game. And hopefully I won't make a hundred errors because it's somewhat complicated and convoluted. But hopefully this playthrough will give you a good idea of how this game works. All right, so to further continue with our setup, uh, I just wanted to show you some tokens. So there are 10 fire tokens in the game. They're just double-sided little tokens. And if a fire breaks out, you put it in the appropriate uh, room, and there it will happen. You have high water. Uh, you have water flood markers. So you have a low water flood, and you have a completely flooded compartment. Uh, so those will get placed in the board. There's 10 of those, one for each thing. And you also have locked hatch. Uh, or jammed hatch uh, markers and they go on to you see little blue sections here on the board so if that hatch is jammed it goes on there and again I'll go through all the rules as we play and get rid of the markers 
There are also four, I call them sort of catastrophic event markers. You have one for uh, your oxygen running out. You have one for the engine's hull going to breach. You have ones for missiles that are going to uh, prematurely detonate. And you have, yes, one for the Kraken. But the Kraken, like I said, will not be showing up uh, for quite some time because we have to go through the whole deck first before we get to it. And so now let's just rearrange these a little bit. Each gnome starts the game with two um, events. So, uh, or sorry, two items. And these are our item cards. And so let's just get two items for each. And we'll kind of explain a little bit. So our blue gnome gets a reactor manual. So discard to gain plus four bonus to fix the reactor card uh, for the reactor room. And the reactor room is right here where the green gnome is. His second card uh, is he gets another reactor manual. Yes, these were shuffled, so there are multiples. So he's going to be our fix the reactor guy by the look of it. Our green gnome is going to get a toolbox. And this is discard to get a plus three bonus to fix oxygen pumps, fix the engine or the reactor. So uh, that's a, a multi-tool to use. I really did shuffle these, so it gets another toolbox. So he's our general handyman. And our red guy is going to get an engine manual. Wow, all manuals. Where's the rest of the stuff in this game? And he gets a pump manual. So we didn't really see any grog. We didn't see any uh, fire extinguishers or water pumps are also in the game. So sort of a bizarre start. And like I said, I did shuffle everything. Okay, so I think what I'm going to attempt here is we're just going to get right into it. We're going to do a turn or two for our first video here and see how it goes. Uh, and if I make any errors, please leave some comments for me uh, because I've probably done something wrong and needs to be correcting. Like I said, I've played this game. I've just gotten it recently a few times. I've gone on Board Game Geek, looked up a lot of the questions and answers. So I think I have a fairly good idea how everything's supposed to work. But, like I said, I could mess things up, which is quite possible. Alright, so I'm going to zoom out again. We're going to get onto the board, and we're going to start doing Red November as our submarine heads into severe peril, and we'll see what happens. Alright, before we get right into it, one last thing I wanted to show you is the back of the manual uh, itself. It has an action summary, and this might be somewhat confusing. I'll try to explain it as we play the game. The actions you can do is unblock a door if it's blocked. You can extinguish a fire. You can pump water. You can fix an engine, fix the oxygen pumps, fix a reactor, stop a missile launch, kill a Kraken, draw item cards, trade item cards, no action, which will make sense, kind of, and abandon your comrades. Yes, you can abandon ship if you have an aqua lung uh, and you feel that everyone's going to die. You can escape through the hatch and try and win the game yourself. So movement summaries, and we have a turn sequence. Turn sequence is basically your movement. Then you perform at one action. You're only allowed one action on your turn. That's it. Then you have a faint check. The faint check is used if you drink grog. You have to figure out if you pass out or not. And then the updates phase. Well, the updates phase is a couple of things. You see, it does a gnome die. If he's stuck in a room with fire or full flood, he'll be toast. Otherwise, he continues on. So, movement summary. You can open a hatch. It costs one minute. Uh, you can reflow water. doesn't cost anything. Well, again, I'll try to explain this as we play. Entering a room does not cost anything. Optional zero to one minute. Or leave the sub takes one minute. Okay, well, and then they just tell you the room number. So the engine room is number one. The oxygen pumps are two. The reactor room is number four. Missile control, seven. Equipment stores, eight. Captain's cabin is ten. And in the captain's cabin, there are six bottles of grog. And I can just show you that there quickly if you wanted to have a look at that. That's also in the back of the manual. It sort of shows you where everything is. All right, now that I've covered all that off, uh, I am going to get into this game. Let's do it. So like I said, the turn sequence in this game is kind of odd uh, because you can basically spend as much time as you like uh, and just go ahead and do things. And so what we've got here is uh, I just ran, and that's another part of the setup, is you randomly juggle how many, however many players and you just throw them down uh, one at a time. So this is randomly set up. So red is going to go first. Now I'm going to use the ghost marker uh, for the number of minutes he's going to use. So I'm trying to go fairly slowly this first turn, try to explain things. And like I said, if I make mistakes, please leave comments and I will try and fix it. So red here is in number six location. 
So for his first minute, it takes one minute to open a hatch. This is a hatchway, so he's going to open the hatch. Now it doesn't take any minute, doesn't take any time to move anywhere. So it's kind of odd. So it takes a minute to open the hatch, but it takes me no time to get in here. So that was a whole one minute. Now I'm going to move into this room. So I'm going to open this hatch. That's going to take another minute. So I'm just putting the ghost marker along here. I'm not doing any events or collecting the items yet. We're going to do that after we spend all our time. So basically what happens is the gnome is doing a bunch of stuff. And while he's doing the stuff he's doing, uh, things are happening to the ship, usually bad things. But anyway, that's sort of the timeline in the game's kind of odd, but you'll see how it works. So well, you had one minute to open this hatch, one minute to open a hatch. Now if we open this hatch, we don't have to go anywhere. We could stay there, but kind of pointless. So we're going to move in here. And what we're going to do in this room, this is the storage locker room, we're actually going to go into this orange section here, and we're going to spend some time collecting items, because items in this game are what you need to survive. Fire extinguishers, water pumps, all kinds of uh, exciting things, and grog is another thing you can collect. Every item you collect takes one minute to collect it. I believe that is what it says. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to draw item cards. And you can draw up to four cards, so you can spend four minutes, one for each card. And we're just going to draw one, two, three, because that's going to take us only having two events happen. So one, two, three. So we're going to draw three cards. So our red player is going to draw three cards. So the first card he draws is he gets some Grog. And how Grog works is you discard and increase the gnome's uh, intoxication level by one, uh, two, uh, enter a room with a fire in it, or get in, and gain a plus three bonus to any fix-it action. So he gets a grog, so that was one minute, so for two minutes he's going to pick up another item, and he gets a deactivation code. This is to try and stop the missiles from prematurely blowing up the submarine, and the last one he gets is another deactivation code. So he's going to be our disarm the missile guy. So he now has five cards. There's no limit to the number of cards you can have. However, some of the events will make you stumble, losing cards, tripping and stuff. And so you could run out of cards. Uh, so collecting a whole pile of cards is kind of good. But if you stumble or if there's a uh, like a sea quake or whatever it's called in the game, you have to discard down to like one card or something, which becomes extremely annoying. However, that's part of this game. So he's basically done what he wants to do. Uh, that was his one action, was collecting items. So he's done his movement, he's done his uh, action. Now it would be a feint check. If he had used Grog this turn, he would have to do a feint check, but he didn't. So we're not going to worry about that right now. And now we're into the updates. Uh, does the act of Gnome die? Well, no, he's not in a room with fire, or he's not anywhere else. So what we have to do now is we have to move his actual marker to the ghost marker location. And how we do that is we just go along this event line uh, doing what we need to do. So the first thing we run into here is a star. Well, a star means an event is taking place while he was running around going to the storage locker and gathering stuff. The first event we have, uh, whoops, that is not an event. That is an item. Sorry about that. The first event he has happen is a hatch is blocked. The active player chooses to block a hatch uh, that is attached to a random room. So what we need to do is we need to roll a d10 uh, and then we have to block one of the hatches uh, of that room number. So let me grab a d10 which does not seem to be handy at the moment and we'll roll that and see which hatch we're going to block. Okay so we're going to have our first blocked hatch and let's see what happens. And we roll a four. And so how we do this is we're going to take one of these little blocked hatch markers and we're going to go to room four, which is right here. Uh, and we have to decide which of these three hatches is going to be blocked. And I think we're going to block this one because it's going to have the least effect kind of on the character. So we're going to go ahead and block that one. All right. That was event number one. So we keep moving this marker along the line and we get to another event, another star marker. So something else is going wrong. And the something else that's going wrong is another uh, blocked hatch. So we have another one somewhere. So we're gonna have to roll another D10. We roll a three and we're gonna have to block, oh man. So this is room three. Now we either have to block this one or this one. I think we're gonna block that one so we can still get into room three if we need to. However, 
the more blocked hatches in the submarine. Of course, you have to use an action to try to unblock a hatch. Uh, it's going to start slowing us down when really bad things happen. All right, that's basically the two events. So now this colored marker is going to catch up to the ghost marker. So there it is. So I'm going to put that off to the side a little bit. The ghost marker now is going to go back to the start. And the next player up is going to be the green player. And so you keep doing this over and over and over. Uh, the person farthest behind on the track is always going to go first. So that's why the turn sequence is a little bit... Not like a traditional game where, you know, you, red goes and blue goes and whatever, on and on and on, over and over. This, the, uh, the turn sequence can change because some, one person can spend a whole pile of time doing something. And someone else can spend a very short amount of time doing something. You may be able to go two or three times in a row if you only spend one minute or so doing things. But anyway, continuing on. Up next in sequence is the green player. So the green player is sitting here. Green player, I think, is going to do a very similar thing, but I think he's going to go and grab himself some grog. And so, just kind of do this a little quickly. He's going to open this hatch. That takes a minute. Moving in here doesn't take any time. So one minute, he's going to open this hatch. Two minutes, he's going to open that hatch. Three minutes, and he's going to get himself some grog. So three minutes, he's actually going to grab just one grog. That's going to take one minute for him to do that. So he spent a total of four minutes getting into the captain's quarters and getting a grog. And so we take the ghost marker, one, two, three, and four. And I think he's just going to leave it there. And I should say, when you are on this orange space, which means you have taken uh, items, or in this case, taken grog, you cannot do that two times in a row. So the green player next turn cannot stay in the captain's quarter and take more grog. And the red player cannot stay in the weapons or the item locker and start taking more items. You have to go do another action. And the other action can be no action, which means you just stay in the room, do nothing, but it still costs you a minute to do a no action. All right. And so now we have to catch the green marker up to the ghost marker for the green player. And the green marker goes ahead and yeah, we get an event taking place immediately. And you can see things are going to go sour very quickly. So we have a reactor warm-up. Advance the heat track by one. Okay, so the reactor is starting to heat up. That's not good. So we're going to move this little red marker here up the red track. You're going to see there's stars here. Uh, if it goes past that star, whenever you repair the reactor, it only goes back to this star location. So you want to try to make sure you repair the reactor and get it back to this star location. And we'll see that happening as it happens. So the green player continues on. He's trying to catch up to his ghost marker. Yes, we have another catastrophic thing happening. And this time we have a reactor malfunction. Ooh, our reactor is really uh, starting to fall apart. And it says advance the heat track by two this time. All right, so now our reactor is really starting to heat up. And again, if that reactor gets all the way up here, the ship basically blows up and we're all dead. So we don't want that to happen. But those are the two events that took place. Now the green marker catches up to the ghost marker. It's sitting here. Ghost marker resets to blue. It's now blue's turn. All right, what does blue have? Well, boy, yeah, you would think I'd staged this. But anyway, the blue character has reactor manuals. Discard to gain plus four bonus to fix the reactor. And these can stack. He actually has two of them. So we could use both reactor manuals at the same time. Uh, and that would allow him a very good chance of fixing the reactor. And so yes indeed, the blue player is going to get over to the reactor room and use his one action to try and fix the reactor so we don't have it overheating, blowing up the ship. So he's going to open up this hatchway. That's cost one minute. He's going to open up this hatchway, costing another minute. So we're going to move the ghost marker two minutes. Now he has a decision to make. So his action is going to be a fix-it action. He's going to try and fix the reactor. And so how does he fix the reactor? Well, he has to decide how many minutes he's going to spend trying to fix the reactor. Uh, and then we're going to roll a 10-sided die. If he can get equal to um, or less than the number of minutes he spent trying to fix the reactor, the reactor will be fixed. If he doesn't do that, he will fail fixing the reactor. Um, he is going to use, he's just going to use one reactor manual. Like I said, they can stack. So he's going to get a plus four. So that automatically gives him a 
four. So if he used no time, uh, but just wanted to fix the reactor by using the book, he could roll a four or less and fix the reactor. But he's going to spend some time working at it. So he's going to spend one, two, three minutes uh, to end the reactor manual, giving him a total of seven. So, <laughs> so he needs to roll a seven or less to fix the reactor. And I wonder if he shouldn't just spend two more minutes to make it a nine. Yeah, you know what? He's going to spend two more minutes. So the only way he's going to fail to fix this reactor is if he rolls a ten. Because we need a nine or less. So here we go. He rolls an eight. So I'm glad that I did that because he would have failed. So by rolling an eight, it was nine or less. The reactor is fixed. And the reactor is going to go backwards till it gets to a star. So this reactor now is fixed, goes right back to the starting location. Excellent. So our blue player has fixed the reactor. And that was his movement, his one action. He's basically, his turn is over, and now we have to advance his token. So, yep, the first thing that happens is something bad happens to the ship. The reactor warm-up. Advance the heat track by one. Yes, I shuffled all these, believe it or not. So it's, he fixed the reactor, but it's still heating up. Guess he didn't fix it very well. Uh, we advance along the time track here again till we get to, yep, another event. This time we have a hatch blocked, and we know what that is. It's in a random room, we have to block a hatch. This is going to get problematic if we have too many blocked hatches. So uh, number nine, this is number nine. So we have to block a hatch attached to number nine. So it would be uh, Blue's choice. And which hatch does he want to block? I think he's going to block this one here between eight and nine because then we still have access through the other ways. Continuing on, the marker moves, the marker moves, and yes, we have another catastrophic event. Oh, maybe it's not catastrophic. Maybe it's just annoying. We have a missile countdown. Oh, good lord. This is a timed event. Place the missile launch destruction token at plus 10. Okay, so how does this work? Well, the missiles are, have, launch, have armed themselves and they're ready to blow up the ship internally. So we go from where it took place, which is right here, and we're going to count 10 minutes ahead. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If all three of our gnomes' action tokens land on or go past this event marker, the missiles will blow up the ship. So now we have definitely something we need to do. We need to fix the missile launch uh, timer, and that's right here in room 7. And so, continuing on, we get to the ghost marker, and that's where blue ends up their turn. Ghost marker is going to go back here. So when we come back in our next video, green is going to be going first. Green has a couple toolkits and a grog, uh, so he will probably run over to the missile launch room and see if he can fix that before the missile uh, prematurely detonates and sinks our submarine, taking our three gnomes with it. Well, I hope I haven't made any mistakes during our first uh, our setup and playthrough. I hope you're enjoying it. This is uh, Red November, the latest edition. I believe there was only two editions. This is the latest one anyway. Uh, so thanks again so much for watching along. Uh, thanks for subscribing if you do. Thanks for making uh, any comments or thumbs up liking video if you do as well. Uh, so I'm back at it again. I'm uh, not sure I'm going to be able to get a video out every day. I'm kind of busy uh, with a move and with job hunting and what have you, but I will continue on with this, of course, for a complete playthrough until we either lose or win. Uh, so hopefully I can get these videos out rather quickly, but they, there may be some delays. Anyway, thanks so much for watching along, and we'll catch me next time.